This has challenged my faith more all than just about anything all else in my life. life. You walk away from the dark and you're sitting in the water. So we go to the master. Dog Call, thank you for taking this time to uh, to listen to this interview as I get a chance to sit down and talk to some great writers, some great Christians, see what God is doing in their lives. Hey guys, Michael Furlonger here, author and founder of ChristianWritersBookstore.com. Uh, I'm working on a new project where I get to sit down and talk with Christian authors to see what they're working on, how God is using, using them for His glory. Uh, today we're talking with Karen Beery, who has written two books titled Practically Married and Summer Plans and Other Disasters. It's always optimistic. Um, so we're just going to talk to her and see what she is working on and uh, how God got her started into writing. Hi. Thanks for having me. You say that you did not like reading at all as a as a child, but now now you're a writer, so obviously something something had to happen. Do you want to share a bit on that? Sure. Actually, um, I wasn't a very good reader, which is why I didn't enjoy reading. And my younger sister wasn't a very good reader. So um, I can actually say that Hooked on Phonics worked for me because my mom bought the program. And as she was teaching my younger sister how to read, I just kind of followed along and I became a more competent reader. Um, and then at the same time, my older sister was a voracious reader. She read everything she could get her hands on. So uh, my naturally competitive side came out. And if my older sister was going to read a book in a day, then I wanted to read a book in a day. So we went through, you know, all the Sweet Valley Twins books, the Babysitter's Club books, and then eventually Nancy Drew. Um, but I was probably in about fourth or fifth, maybe sixth grade when that happened. So was not an early reader, but I did eventually fall in love with it. That's, that's awesome that you like to read. And um, I think competition is good. Uh, my wife says I'm a bit too competitive, that we're on the treadmills at the gym, and she'll be at you know, three miles an hour, and I'll wait, well, I'm going to go 3.2 miles an hour just to, I think it, I think it can be a, a healthy and good, but that's always up for debate, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so you started reading, and which is, which is great, and you said that uh, you would read, you would have to hide Harlequin romance novels from your mom. And I'm going to show my ignorance because I don't know what a Harlequin uh, romance novel uh, novel is. So why would your mom disapprove and do you disapprove if, if you have children? So when I was a young adult, we didn't have this huge young adult fiction section that you can find nowadays. So like I said, once we got through Nancy Drew and the Babysitter's Clubs, really there was just adult novels available. And I grew up in a small town, so we had some Jeanette Oak books and we had some Laurie Wick Christian fiction, uh, but it didn't take long for me to read through those. And at that point, the only thing that was really appropriate for me were the classics. But really as a seventh grader reading Pride and Prejudice, I wasn't really into it. It was a very different style. I didn't appreciate it for what it is. Um, so the Harlequin romances, especially in that day, um, those are the ones that have the stereotype of the bodice rippers. So um, much more sensual <laughs> um, material than what was appropriate for a 14-year-old girl. But there weren't many other books, like I said, that I enjoyed. And there just weren't a lot of especially Christian young adult books. So I had a friend and her mom had some Harlequins, so she brought some to school and gave them to me and I would hide them away um, just because the scenes were pretty racy and pretty steamy. Uh, so I just kind of skim over those as quickly as I could just to get to the rest of the story. Um, these days, Harlequin has a whole line of books, everything from uh, what we call the steamy romance um, to the low heat or no heat. And I do believe they even have an inspirational line. So they really do have, you know, something for all of the different um, romance readers out there. But again, probably not the most appropriate for a 14-year-old girl. Uh, I was just thinking as you were sharing is that um, there are some uh, books, books made into movies that just, just in my mind, I think that 
we would do what what used to be you know um, taboo or frowned upon nowadays looks quite uh, quaint quite yeah. uh, quite simple so um, so uh, that's that's just a random thought <laughs> anyway um, so then you ended up getting a an English degree and chose to write your own uh, own novels, your own books instead. Uh, do you mind sharing that that process of how that um, how actively reading turned into into writing and how your faith essentially has um, has shifted with your own writing? Yeah, that's and that is actually an interesting story because I didn't get the English degree because I wanted to write. I got the English degree because I wanted to go into business, but I hated business classes. Um, I grew up in a tourist town and I very much loved working in the tourism industry. Um, I enjoyed working with people. I did some event planning and things like that for years, but I hated the business classes. So I talked with several um, businessmen and some HR directors and asked them how important it was to have a business degree. And pretty universally, they said, they don't care what the degree is, as long as you have a degree, they can teach you their business. And I decided therefore that I wanted to get an English degree. And they all spoke very highly of English degrees and history degrees because they teach you how to think and they teach you how to write. And that's very important in any business because so many people don't know how to communicate well. So that was actually the reason for the English degree. And by the time I got my degree and graduated, I was so burned out from reading <laughs> that I didn't pick up a book. Uh, so I graduated in May, probably until November. It took a long time. And I picked up the Jan Karen Mitford series. And it was so refreshing to go from Francis Bacon's essays <laughs> to just a lighthearted, fun story. Um, but even still then, it took a few years. It wasn't until... Um, about five years later, when my husband was diagnosed with cancer, that I just needed an outlet. I had so many emotions and there were so many things going on. I didn't know what to do. So I just started going down to, um, let's see, what did we have there? It's Books a Million now. I don't, a border, it was Borders at the time. Um, and when he was getting his chemotherapy treatments, I would go down to Borders and I would just start picking up books and reading them because I needed an outlet. Um, but I started reading again, actually some Janet Ivanovich books, which I loved. It was the first time I'd ever read a book that was funny, but there's a lot of swearing in them. Um, not quite as steamy as some of the Harlequin books that I had read as a kid, but still, you know, some scenes that um, aren't necessarily appropriate for all audiences. And when I started reading those, I realized that you could actually write funny books that included some romance. And I wanted to try to do that, but also make it so that it would be appropriate for 14-year-old me. So for young readers or even for adult readers who wanted something fun and entertaining so that if their husbands are going through chemotherapy, they can tune out and they can just get kind of the fluff book and leave reality behind. And that's really when I started writing. And it was just my way of coping. So that's how I started writing. And I think there was more to that question and I've forgotten it now. <laughs> so how has your your faith been um, affected? And now you shared also about your um, your husband and cancer. So how's your faith through writing and perhaps through that has all how have how has that all um, come to shape? This has challenged my faith more than just about anything else in my life. Um, there, there were a lot of things in my life that came pretty easily. And when I decided to start writing fiction, it did not take long to realize how much I don't know. And I got a lot of really nice rejection letters. <laughs> They're all rejection letters. And the more I started studying, the more I started helping other people, the more I started seeing other people succeed by taking my advice, and yet I still wasn't making any um, headway. And there were times when I would just ask God if I could quit. But every time I prayed about it, I felt like this is what he was calling me to do. And at one point, it was several years into the writing, 
I was, I think I was probably just in tears again. And in one of my prayer times, he just pretty clearly told me, I never called you to write because I wanted you to learn how to write. I called you to write because there are some things in your heart I had to get at, and this was the only way I could get to them. So a lot of that was the rejection, learning how to deal with that. There were a lot of pride issues that needed to be dealt with. And I could have made excuses in all of the other areas in my life, but in this one area, for whatever reason, that's how he was able to get to me. And that's how he was able to teach me these lessons. So that's why, especially when it comes to Christians, if God's called you to write and you believe he's called you into publication, I strongly encourage you to ask him which path he has, because I could have very easily taken the self-publishing route and done things that way. And I'm, because I'm not dissing it, there are a lot of people who do it very successfully, but that was not the path God called me to. My path took 10 years to get a book published. But there was so much more involved, you know, writing was that much of it. And what he wanted to do in my heart was that much of it. And I would have missed out on so many of those lessons if I had just decided to do it my way. And well, I, I can find out how to do this. I can learn how to do this. I can do it well. I'll just do it this way instead. Um, so that's why my encouragement is there's no right way or wrong way. Just make sure you're doing it God's way. And he might call you to take 10 years to do it, but it will totally be worth it in the end going places with the conversation that uh that we don't have time to go into on uh talking about publication and things like that i uh i i originally was i i went the self-publishing road i was originally picked up by a publisher and it kind of fell through and but we don't have time <laughs> for these discussions so um but i remember you said uh in our when we were talking about doing this uh interview you said that your books are not, you don't like classifying them as, you know, Christian. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you prefer to be seen as more of a secular approach. Uh, so how does God laid, a, laid this burden on your heart? And sorry if that's offensive. I, I always say burden because okay. whenever God tells me to do something, it never seems to be easy. It's never, <laughs> Michael, go to McDonald's and get yourself a Big Mac. No, it's always, it's always difficult. But um, how did God, uh, yeah, just, just say, do it, do it, and do it my way. You know, actually, my first book, it would be classified as Christian fiction. There is a, a nice faith element in there. Um, and it's really, I mean, it's summer plans and other disasters. It's about a girl who makes plans and just assumes that God will go along with them. Uh, born out of a lot of experience. <laughs> uh, but when I started the next novel, I felt like what the Lord was calling me to do was just to write a fun clean story. Um, and I know some people in the romance world don't like to call it clean because that implies that other things are dirty. So, you know, I let people know it's a clean read guarantee. There will be no gratuitous sex, no gratuitous swearing, no gratuitous violence. Um, there may be bad things that happen, but you're not going to see them described on the page. Um, and I just felt like the Lord was calling me just to write a good book. And then when people go to your website and when people go to Facebook and they see what I'm doing, that's where I can let them know, okay, this is what I've chosen to do, but this is who guides me. This is who leads me. And I'm, there's nothing wrong with a gospel message in a story. And I know there's a lot of people who write those and that's just where the Lord is calling them. But for me, I just really felt like it was reach out to those people, just, you know, reach out to them with a story. And then when they want to get to know you better, that's when you can start to share with them about who God is and what he's doing. Uh, so that's the, the path that I chose, um, kind of like the publishing. There's no right or wrong answer, whatever God's calling you to do. But I felt like that's what he was telling me. So give them a story and then create that relationship with them. That's, um, that's, that's very true. And even as uh, Christians in general is that you want to build that um, that. I don't know, love loving relationship that friendship without uh being too too heavy i guess with uh mm -hmm. with, with the word of god not that again not, it's all up to what god has laid on your heart to write i was thinking as you were sharing um like c.s lewis the chronicles of narnia like I, I don't know if anybody would have thought that this man is uh is a christian unless you read more into c.s lewis 
and you know is um merely mere Christianity and uh, the screw tape letters and those type of um, books that he's also written. And uh, I also think that um uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, I, I believe he was he also is a uh, a man of faith. I don't know if he's a Christian or Catholic, but but he and uh, C.S. Lewis apparently had a lot of discussions on mm -hmm. things. Anyway, um, so can you share just a little bit about uh, about your books and just what they're about? The books that I write and how I describe them to people, they're going to find witty characters, hopeful plots, and a healthy dose of romance. Um, they might not necessarily fit the romance um, qualifications where, you know, boy meets girl at the beginning and la di da di da ends at the end. So there might be some variations on that, but you can count on those three things. So the first book, Summer Plans and Other Disasters, it, like I said, that was a Christian, that is a Christian novel. That one actually has four point of view char characters and they all kind of revolve around Callie and she is an elementary school teacher and she has her whole summer planned out and she just needs God to get on board with her plans. So, and like I mentioned, that one's kind of birthed out of some personal experiences with making my plans and letting God know what I'd like him to do for me. Um, so that one does have a faith element in it, uh, but I promise there's romance in it as well. Practically Married was just my challenge to myself. So this, that one is qual classified as just a clean read. So um, nothing in there contradicts scripture. Uh, but you're not going to see any overtly Christian content either. So if you have a friend that you want to give, you know, a nice romance book to, but you don't want to give them a Christian book, it would be appropriate. Um, but it was my challenge to myself. I wondered if I could take the historical romance trope of a marriage of convenience and write it in a modern day setting, because I am a sucker for a historical marriage of convenience romance. Um, but I don't want to do the research necessary to make it historically accurate. <laughs> so I wanted to set it in um, the modern times. Uh, so that's how I got started on that one. And uh, it's been well received. I was nominated for a couple of awards with that book. Didn't win either of them, but I was just thrilled to receive the nominations. And I'm actually working on a follow-up novella that I hope to release early part of next year um, that takes one of the minor characters and looks a little bit at her life. So hopefully in the spring. Awesome. Uh, I, I hope that you keep talking. We keep in touch so I can know your books. They're going to be up on a, a Christian Writers Bookstore. will be in the description below. As will your, um, your website and your bio because I know that we're not able to share too, too much. But you did say in your bio that you like a certain show called Curse of Oak Island, which I will... Um, embarrassingly confess that um, I'm sad that it's taking them until 2021 to get their next season out, but it's a show. I'm going to share with everyone. It's a show. Believe that pirates or something came to uh, Nova Scotia, Canada and uh, buried a treasure somewhere <laughs> on an island called Oak Island, and they believe it's cursed because people keep on trying to dig, try to find it, and, and sadly people end up dying in their in their search for it. So, uh, Karen's going to be our expert, and she's going to tell us what is hidden in Oak Island. Okay, so a little confession here. Um, the reason I started watching that uh, with my husband is because uh, one of the men who, um, like, is I, I think it's one of the guys who owns it, he's from a city not too far from here. So when I tell people, um, I'm from Northern Michigan. I usually tell them I'm from Traverse City, Michigan, because that's the closest big city. And one of those brothers, I believe, is from Traverse City. So we kind of heard about it that way. Um, so this is my time to confess to you. I started watching it with my husband. I actually have no idea what the treasure is that they're looking for. All I know is that every episode they're looking for something, and I still don't know what they're looking for. <laughs> so I'm completely clueless. Um, I think there's probably something there because they dig up a lot of really cool stuff, uh, but I still haven't found anyone who could tell me what they even think is on the island. So I suppose it's anybody's guess. Well, my guess, yeah, my guess is um, is uh, the um, 
Uh, they they believe that it's the Knights Templar that mm. that was there. So they believe, or what I'm understanding that they believe, and and I'd like it to be, is the um, the Ark of the Covenant. That's that's my that's my thought. That's my hope. My wife and I we kind of joke about that. Uh, uh, as soon as they find it, then Christ will come and and, <laughs> and all that stuff. So yeah, your guess is as good as mine, but um. I remember as a kid, I used to dig holes. We used to live in a 10-acre hobby farm, and I remember just digging a hole with uh, with my cousin, hoping to make it to China or something one day. <laughs> but I think we only got like maybe three feet deep and, and gave up. <laughs> so <laughs> we're no good at um, at uh, treasure hunting, I guess. Yes. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to just throw out there um, before we close? You know, for any writers that are listening, um, my encouragement is always just to be teachable and to stay teachable. Uh, like I said, especially for Christians, you need to do what you believe the Lord is calling you to do, whatever that path is. So don't let anybody talk you out of that. But as you're on that path, just stay teachable. When you have a humble spirit, that's really what helps you not only succeed in publishing, but that's what's going to help you learn those lessons that God has for you on the way. Awesome. Thank you. That's that's great advice. That, um, um, there's a, the scripture says, uh, um, it's a proverb says, uh, oh shoot, it's, um, it's, uh, trust, some that trust in the Lord and he will guide your steps or yes. put trust in the Lord. And, Proverbs or, 3, 5, and 6. And there's yep. another one that says um, that man decides his own, something like man decides his own destiny, but the Lord measures the steps or something mm -hmm. anyway anyway so that's that's some great advice for uh for christian writers your book's gonna be on the link below so if you guys are watching and you want to support christianwritersbookstore.com i can get copies of her books on the website and your uh your website will be will be in the description as well if you want to read up more on karen beery and uh just her process that she's gone through uh, if you want to stay with me just for a moment as we get uh, information, that'd be great. And uh, the rest of you, have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Hey, guys, thank you for paying, for being with us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, um, enjoyed this interview. If you'd like to support the author or support ChristianWritersBookstore.com, the link will be in the description below. Also, if you'd like to get some merchandise like this uh, shirt, uh, Christian Writers Bookstore, dot com uh shirts mugs we got a whole bunch of stuff uh feel free to check out the merchandise uh section on the website all right i hope you guys have a good day god bless bye now